Hi all, welcome to introduction to probability. This is video lecture number 3. In this video, we are going to explain the concept of coins. Because the concept of coins is the basic understanding, basic requirement to understand probability. Some questions may come from this concepts also. So a coin, it has two sides. One is tail and one other one is head. In this video lecture I will show the head side with orange color and tail side with green color for easy understanding so we normally see in tossing coins is a normal practice in cricket football and all so there is 50 50 equal probability for getting head and tail means there is equal chance for getting head and equal chance for getting tail okay now I am going to do an experiment. I am going to throw the coin. So there are two different chances. Now I am getting the green color up. The top side that is green color that is tail. So the outcome of this experiment is tail T. There is one more chance. If I am throwing the coin the head also may come. So this is one more outcome of the experiment. So head. So all the possible outcomes of an experiment which no normally denoted with sample space S which means that all the possible outcome of an experiment. Experiment is nothing but the activity that we are doing. So we are here we are tossing the coin. This is the activity or this is the experiment and uh, the sample space is all the possible outcomes. There are two possible outcomes. The one is head and one is tail. So head we denoted by H and tail we, we denoted by so the size of the sample space is 2 that is one is tail and one is head so we need to find the probability so in one throw what is the probability of getting a tail we know that number of chance of getting tail is only one in the sample space one divided by total number of chances two one by two similarly the probability of getting head that is one divided by two that's one by two I hope you understand the concept of uh, coin one throw coin so we will be going forward with two coins okay consider two coins and for easy understanding I kept the head and tail notation here orange means head and uh, green means tail so I am going to toss the first coin so the there are two possibilities head may came or tail may came so I got the green color up that is tail okay so now I am going to throw the second coin so the outcome is tail again so it is TT means two tails so outcome of this experiment is first experiment is TT tail tail ok now there are one more chances the second coin can come as head like this ok now I got head so the outcome is th in the similar way I can get the first coin as head and the second coin as tail or head so there are four possible outcomes so in sample space you will write tt means first coin is tail second coin is also tail and second case first coin is tail second coil is head and the third case first coin is head and second coin is tail and fourth case both the coins are head so these are the four outcomes of the experiment means the sample size for sample space size is 4 so we can write the probability of getting two heads what is the probability of getting two heads that is p of hh that is only one hh in the sample space 1 divided by total num size of the sample space that is 4 1 by 4 so what is the probability of getting two tails it is also same because only one tt is there so what is the probability of getting one tail and one head it can be either tail head or head tail because uh, we our condition is we need to get one tail and one head so it is 2 by 4 that is 1 by 2 ok now the concept of two coins is clear so we will be moving forward the concept of three coins so if I am going to throwing three coins what is the probability of getting three heads for finding this do we need to write the sample space 
which will be very lengthy because when throwing the one coin we got two size sample space size as two when throwing the coin two coins we got the sample space size as four so when we are throwing three coins the sample space size will be more so do we need to write the sample space for solving this problem no need of doing that so we will be covering this concept in coming lecture and you can solve this if you are understanding the concept you can write the sample space and you can solve you can comment the answer you can watch lecture number four for the easy method to find the answer for this question thank you for watching thank you